Good morning, everybody. I don't know whether you can see me. So uh, my name is Adam Rogers. Um, I'm the VP of Creative Head of Studio for Departure Lounge, a company in Vancouver that also houses Metastage Vancouver. Um, hopefully some of you are feeling more awake than that guy on the screen is right now. Um, so as I said, I'm from uh, Departure Lounge, uh, which is a new company founded in Vancouver. We're a tools and tech company for, um, and a creative services and a web three company. Um, but I'm kind of here today to talk about Volumetric and how it's uh, changing the game across the landscape of content creation. But uh, first of all, I just wanted to start the session off with this. I guess you're wondering why did I start with a Depeche Mode video? Well, for me, that was the moment where I truly found myself immersed in content. I was lucky enough to be a producer at Technicolor in London, and I got the opportunity to work with Depeche Mode for seven years, and it was at the time when content was kind of changing, technology was changing, and digital media was becoming prevalent. So we were taking this content, we were remastering it, both video and audio, and then we were placing people in these 5.1 rooms, and it was really then that I felt like I was being immersed in content outside of what we would traditionally think about when we get immersed. I think up until that point, yeah, going to the cinema, going to the theater, they are immersive, but this to me was a real turning point. And so for the next seven years, I worked with Depeche Mode and a number of other bands to bring their content into this form. Um, and it was a huge privilege for me to, to be a part of that. I then moved from Technicolor uh, London to Vancouver because obviously around you know, the middle of the 2000s, the DVD format was coming to an end in terms of its, uh, uh, the, the possibilities were ending because the content was changing onto digital media online. So then I moved into filmmaking, working with directors and DPs um, across the spectrum in Vancouver, um, and then moved into visual effects where, again, you know, we're still trying to immerse people in these worlds. We're creating the worlds that movies are made and then putting people, making them feel like they're in those worlds. Um, had the privilege to work on Life of Pi at MPC, um, which we won the Oscar for, and then working at Sony Pictures um, on Alice Through the Looking Glass. Not a great movie, but an amazing uh, technical achievement with the visual effects workflow and had the opportunity to work with the great Ken Ralston, who is from ILM fame. Then this happened. Um, this is Palmer Lucky. Um, you know, you could say a number of things about Palmer, but the one thing he did do is he essentially changed the game for immersive content. And with his Oculus Rift, it sort of spearheaded the industry to, to move forward with virtual reality and now obviously augmented reality. So where do I fit in with this? Well, then I met this guy. This guy is Tyler Hurd. If you don't know Tyler, he's a pioneer, one of the world's greatest storytellers in VR, uh, an amazing animator, and he started his journey in VR producing the first animated VR experience called Butts, and then went on to produce the first fully immersive sixed off music experience. Uh, so now you're not watching a music video, you're in the music video. So him and I worked together for several years um, producing three pieces of high-end uh, VR content. Chocolate is another immersive music piece. 
along with Chorus, which was uh, the world's first multi-user music experience, and then Beachbody Bros, which probably doesn't need any introduction. Uh, I would just download it and play it if I was you. So I'm just going to show you a short clip from Chocolate because it kind of speaks to what I'm talking about when it comes to immersing ourselves in media. So you're in the world, you're part of the music video. Of course, though, this is using animated characters, it's using mocap, because at that point in time, bringing real humans into six-doff experiences didn't actually, wasn't actually possible, certainly not in a 3D form. So now we're moving on to really what the meat of this subject is about, and this is volumetric video capture. Um, I had the extreme privilege of working at Intel Studios in Los Angeles as the creative producer alongside my mentor, Diego Paluski. And we basically were pushing the boundaries of what it meant to perform, create, and capture, and place these captures into performances in headset and other various forms of media. Um, here you can see the stage, hundreds, hundreds of cameras surrounding, 10,000 square foot performance space. This is Greece, Randall Kleisler came in and we produced an AR experience with him to basically give people the opportunity to experience Greece in a new dimension. And as you can see here, volumetric, this is a scene of a Western that was done on the stage. Volumetric, it's all about the cameras. So you're surrounded by all these cameras, and then you're taking all those cameras to create the 3D image that you can then place in space. So what does that actually mean? For those not familiar with, with volumetric, what is different about it to what we've done traditionally? Well, we're all familiar with the frame. This is how content has been produced for you know, over 100 years. It served us very well. You know, we're always looking out, we're trying to fill our foreground, middle ground, and then background. Always trying to create a sense of space and parallax and depth. Sorry, that slide has just... Okay, hopefully it'll work now, sorry. Okay, so... Just run through this again, so cameras looking out, always frontal experience, so we're always capturing what's in front of us. But then as well, you know, as technology's improved, you know, 360 cameras, they, they've come along and you can create amazing panoramic content with 360 cameras. But again, the experience is still frontal. So what does volumetric do? Well, volumetric creates a volume. It creates cameras around you capturing every single point of light that is in that volume. So with that, you're able to create 3D objects. So here we see all the cameras, the people in the, in the center. Every single point of light is being picked up. Then you take all of the information from those cameras and then you crush them down into one single image or one single object. So as you can see here, all those cameras, all the information being squeezed down and then creating that object. And the big thing with volumetric is compression. You're dealing with terabytes and terabytes of data. So you need a pipeline that's going to be successful to taking all that down and then creating something usable in the content uh, creation uh, streams. So now I have the privilege of working at Departure Lounge, as I said, and we house Metastage Vancouver. Um, Metastage has been in existence for about four years, run by a team in LA. Christine Heller has done some pioneering things with the team, and it's a real privilege to house a stage like theirs in our studio in Vancouver. We're part of the, the uh, Microsoft Mixed Reality Pipeline, so we take all our information off the cameras, and then we put it through the Microsoft Pipeline to get really high-resolution images. This is our stage, 106 cameras, 12 megapixels, 4K, 10-bit capture. We process into a variety of different formats depending on the content device that it's being delivered to. We also have the flexibility to move our stage in and out. Um, you know, closer you come in, if it's one subject, you bring the cameras further out if you've got multiple subjects or more action needed. Now, obviously, this stage is not as big as the Intel stage. The Intel stage was a pioneering stage. It was ahead of its time. 
but basically what we're working towards is to get back to a stage of that size and to be able to create the fidelity needed to deliver content uh, to content creators. We think, I could be wrong, but we're pretty much sure that this is the largest volume when we bring our cameras out to 18 feet, that this is the largest volume currently available for volumetric capture. So what does an asset look like? Well, here's our friend Tim. So Tim is a hologram. Let's work our way back through the process just to see what we're getting. Now, you've got 53 cameras capturing RGB, and then you've got 53 cameras ca um, capturing infrared. So what we end up with is we have the textures and RGB color photographs, but then the point cloud from the infrared. And the point cloud makes the mesh to make the model, and then you project on top, and you end up with this really beautiful images. And again, you can see here it's capturing hair and clothing. And as we sort of transition into the metaverse and we want to bring real presence with real people, this is going to be the solution. I love DigiDoubles, I love mocap, but when we talk about performance, when we talk about musicians in, in performance spaces, people want to see the real person. So again, here I can just show you a little bit here. This is some UFC that we did with uh, Unity. You may have seen this in the press recently. Basically, two UFC fighters. And what you see here, this is my mouse on the screen. You can see it's a 3D object. It's not just flat. I'm moving this around and up and down, so you can see the whole objects there. And I'm not sure how well you can see the screen here, but the detail on the back is just exceptional. So then, what do we do with all this content? How does this work with new filmmaking, 3D filmmaking, as we transition into real-time filmmaking, and also traditional VFX? Well, I'm going to hand over to my trusty friend, uh, Lachlan, here to give us a rundown. Hi, my name is Lachlan Monroe, and this is my hologram, speaking to you from a digital twin of the departure lounge in the metaverse. How cool is that? Because I've been captured as a hologram, we can use virtual cameras to do just about any type of camera movement. For example, we could zoom out until I'm just a tiny little dot in the frame, or we can zoom right back in again, or we can shoot me from way, way up above. Hi, Mom. Like I said before, because we're using virtual cameras, there's no need for trucks or dollies. And you can make smooth, long pans around me in any direction. We could even do a bullet time shot like this. Once I've been made into a hologram, my hologram can be placed anywhere. For example, I could be here in the digital twin of the departure lounge, or I could be on the moon, or I, I could be back in Daddy, or I could be in the jungle. Oh, or I could be in the desert. <laughs> Ooh, a hot in here. Or I could just come back to the departure lounge. What? Th this is weird. No, 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 no. Ho, oh, ho. That was weird. Eh, you got to be careful when playing with the power of the metaverse, I guess. Anyway, with the magic of volumetric capture, you can be anywhere in the real or imaginary world and shot from any angle. As a matter of fact, hey, Graham, come down here for a sec. You know, Graham, this technology changes the way that we can experience entertainment. Now, before, we were limited to the frame of the camera. Right now, your eyes can be the camera, 
and you can see things from anywhere. I don't know what you mean. Well, for example, if your eyes were the camera, you would be able to experience what it would be like to say, get punched in the face. What? Okay, thanks to Lachlan and my amazing creative team at the Parch Lounge for producing that piece, and hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview on how, you know, in traditional content now, we can take holograms, place them in 3D space, and create content around them. No need to do multiple takes, no need to go into the edit suite and cut things up to try and make it work. Just go into the engine with your director, with the virtual cameras, and create the shots from there. And of course, the holograms are individual objects, so what's in that, they're placed in that content, but if you've got other content, you want that same hologram to go in, it's as easy as just dropping it in. You're not doing any roto, you're not doing anything that is you know, challenging in the VFX pipeline. And of course, when we think about the metaverse, you know, what you just saw there is you know, traditional content, but that can be put into VR very easily, and then suddenly you're in the scene with the character. Um, and that's something that me and my team are, are pioneering, and I'm gonna mention a couple of things about that in a moment. But also, really want to kind of explain how, like, in visual effects now, how we're able to use these and how it's offering other alternatives for, say, background and previs. Um, oh, I've lost my, um, my presentation. So here, normal scene that you see in a movie. So just imagine you're a director in the edit suite now roll it back and you realize either it's a conscious decision or you've seen mistakes. So now with holograms, you can fill the scene. So here we're just adding in uh, from maybe library or stuff that you've done bespoke. You know, your director, I wish someone was walking across here. Okay, let's cycle through some characters. Okay, that's great. And then, um, okay, well, now I'm seeing the frame. I don't like the fact we've got all that space on the right, on the left. Okay, can we see some holograms in there, please? Yep, okay, let's cycle through. We'll use that lady again, because we really like her. Um, and so again, this is a 3D object, and it's walk cycling, so you just place it in the direction you want and let it go. Um, and this is with a partner that, inter, um, that uh, Metastage LA worked with, and you know, this is plugging into the traditional VFX pipeline. Um, so you know, what we deliver is either an MP4 or OBJ PNG sequences which gives real flexibility if you want to change you know, certain aspects of the hologram. And yeah, so the actor is a 3D object and therefore can be placed on a ground plane in a moving camera. Reflections and contact shadows are from this 3D are highly realistic, which is of course what we want. So then just another piece of content. Here, you're probably not even going to notice where the, the, you're not going to notice where the volumetric asset is, but it's basically one of the guys walking up along the sidelines. But you know, for crowd, for background, um, it's becoming a really useful tool for, for VFX. Now, when we talk about virtual production, you know, we've done away with the green screen now. We're taking another step forward with technology. LED walls, you've probably seen The Mandalorian, you've seen many pieces of content over the last couple of years. Pretty much all shot on an LED where the environment that the actor is performing in is, is on the screen. Foreground elements are built, practical set, um, actors acting in front of the LED wall. So we did a demo at Seagraph where we were actually showing a virtual production demo using the Mars, HTC Mars CamTrack technology without LED wall um, and then placing volumetric characters into the background scene. Um, so I don't have the footage from that because it got corrupted. So I'm just going to use this example with one of our partners in Vancouver who's building some amazing virtual production stages. So yeah, we're working with Versatile on a number of different initiatives with Volumetric, both previs, secondary background actors. Um, but just to give you an example of what we did at the Departure Lounge during Seagraph, 
is this was the scene that was on the LED wall. And you just have to imagine that on, on the LED wall is this, but then in front we built a cafe. There's that guy again. Uh, we built a cafe scene with real actors, and then this was the background scene. And these characters that you see, they're all volumetric, and they were dropped in while we were doing the production. And so as a director, you can have everything set up beautifully, and then you can be like, I need some background. Okay, can we drop actors in there, there, and there? And then, of course, you know, you're done. So now as we transition you know, more and more to headset, to AR, and I've used these glasses because I feel like where we're going with content and how it's being delivered and who's consuming it is dependent on the glasses, the headsets getting better. And I think you know, we're already pioneering content in VR with volumetric. But for me, you know, when you think about some of the amazing VR content that's come out, storytelling is a massive passion of mine. And, you know, Battle Scar, Gloomy Eyes, Wolves in the Walls, like amazing animated stories where you spend 20, 25 minutes in there and you don't even know the time has passed because you're so consumed about the story. Well, now with Volumetric, Volumetric is now bringing real humans into stories in immersive spaces. So, you know, when you think about your film stars, you know, we're going to start seeing content in the future where you're now part of the story or you're in the story or there's branching because you're facing looking at that actor or... The, the, the possibility is endless, and I just want to shout out on the morning you wake, because it was the first time I'd really seen volumetric capture used in a standalone headset uh, to tell a really amazing story and a, a frightening story. This is the story of the text message that went out to all Hawaiian residents during, uh, I can't remember what year, but basically told them there was a ballistic missile coming. So this story talks you through that, and it really, because there's such a human presence in there, you really feel it, and that, that's really what, you know, the the um, format is all about. Um, and then, of course, you know, just music. I think we just saw on the stage, uh, which I thought was awesome, the Paul Oakenfold piece, placing musicians into virtual spaces. As I said before, digital humans, mocap, it has its place. It always has and always will. But we really need to know that we're seeing real people doing the things they really do. And volumetric capture, metaverse, immersive spaces, bring those together, and that's what we got. I'm just going to end with a trailer. Some of you may have seen it in a previous uh, talk, but I don't care because it's such a great piece. I produced it. Um, Kira Benzing is here. She was the writer-director. We worked with Reggie Watts, Intel Studios, to create the first immersive volumetric music video, which uh, landed the South by Southwest Creative Prize in 2019. And it just goes to show that, yes, you've got the real photorealistic is, you know, of course, what we're looking for from volumetric, but then also you can get very artistic with it. And, that's what we did here. So thank you for listening to my talk. I'll be around for any questions and uh, have a good day.